Hey you folks, Quilly Team here and welcome to Let's Play Surviving Mars. I am so very excited to be doing this Let's Play. Surviving Mars is a game that I think everyone, everyone was caught completely off guard when it was announced last year at ParadoxCon and I think everyone instantly wanted to play it right away. And I've had my hands on this game for a little bit. I was doing some work for Paradox, actually, to make a tutorial for it. And I was really focused on the easy setup for that. And at this point, I've really got a sort of easy setup figured out. I got that mastered. No problem. Easy peasy. The problem is, when you're not playing on the easy setup, my god, does this game get a lot more challenging. And so, of course... That's what we're going to choose for this first Let's Play. We're going to pick something very hard. Now, what's the difference between one of the easier setups and one of the harder setups? The International Mars Mission, which is recommended for first-time players, starts you off with 30,000 Mars Bucks. I mean, it's probably something like $30 billion, but I'm going to say Mars Bucks over here. You got a lot of research, you got a lot of applicants, your payloads um, automatically refuel themselves, you've got a bunch of free food every time you show up with passengers. It's easy mode. And then after you go down there, you start to get a lot less starting money, fewer starting rockets as well, and um, some really, really, really difficult setups. For example, we're going to play as the Church of the New Ark over here, which technically, for some reason, the Paradox Interactive Start has the higher difficulty bonus, but I feel like the Church of the New Ark must be harder. You start with no free research whatsoever. I mean, I guess uh, the religious trait's actually a good trait, to, to have us your colonists and the birth rate being doubled is fine but the paradox thing with all the breakthroughs oh my god the breakthroughs are so fun i'm actually wondering if i should just go to the paradox interactive one just because the breakthroughs are so random and completely transform your game so we just do that rockets require more fuel to launch okay you know what yeah i'm sold on the idea that the paradox interactive start is in fact a lot harder you do actually get some free research right away but um as opposed to the Church of New York, but you can actually overcome that pretty easily here. So we'll go ahead and do that. I think it's going to be a big challenge. A single rocket, they need more fuel. Everything's going to be really time consuming. I mean, the other thing we could do is I could choose an easier start, sort of something like middle of the road, like Europe, which is crazy tech oriented, and instead pick a really, really, really hard landscape. If I pick a really hard landscape and an impossible start, it might be a little too challenging. Maybe a middle of the road kind of thing. I do like Europe because it's not it doesn't have a lot of money it still has two rockets so it's easier you do have more uh, extra technologies available and you do get funding every time you research a tech although research and breakthrough tech grants applicants none of this makes any money this is gonna be such a slow start you know what i'm gonna go for europe and instead we'll go with a harder start because i think this will be a little faster to get off the ground and i think that's going to be more exciting for commander profile definitely uh, i'd say the easiest one is the rocket scientist even though something like politician actually has the lower difficulty um bonus and i think long term it's stronger the fact that the rocket scientists start with the shuttle hub and long range transportation unlock is amazing it does start with an extra rocket which can really be important if you only start with one or in fact two like we're going to be starting here uh but i think i'm going to pick something else i don't know what um, Astrogeologist, start with a rare metal deposit revealed, is actually kind of nice for making some extra bucks. Got the Ecologist. You know what? Maybe the Futurist. Breakthrough techs are research 30% faster. And breakthroughs, even playing as Europe, so we get we get funding every time we get a tech and double if it's a breakthrough tech. Maybe the Futurist is the right way to go. Sounds like a lot of fun, actually. Lots of different great options. These are all fantastic. We, of course, just randomize it. But tell you what. Let's go Futurist. I think that's going to be a lot of fun to play as. Obviously, for a colony logo, we have to take the Brussels sprouts. We simply don't have an option. And for a mystery, I guess we'll leave it random. Part of me wants to, like, go through and experience every mystery over time. And I don't know what, like, the power of three is. Is, is it a reference to Charmed? I, I, I don't know. I guess we'll leave it random and we'll see what happens. Hopefully, we get a good one. So we're going to go ahead with this. Europe and Futurist. And we're going to try to pick a start that's a little bit challenging if we can. So here's our first rocket over here, which I'm going to rename the, uh, the Quill Rocket. Quill Rocket. Bam. Like that. Excellent. Now, if you haven't played this or watched any videos before, this is the goods that are going to come in our very first rocket over here, which is here. It's lovely. You can see the Brussels sprout flag on the back. Um, our first rocket isn't going to have any people on it. We're just going to set up our initial base with robots. So we're going to come, there's going to be uh, six drones that are going to be controlled by the shuttle once we're landed, which is great. We're going to have an RC Explorer over here so that we can check out anomalies and various things on the surface. Uh, we're going to bring some polymers, some machine parts, and some electronics with us. We'll also bring some orbital probes that'll help us scan a little faster right off the get-go. The thing is, since I start with... Um, 
Uh, sensor towers don't even need maintenance. I'm wondering, you know what, I'm gonna see if I can cut this back to just a single probe. It's nice to have an extra one, just in case. So we get a little bit of funding back, we also get some more cargo capacity. Now, there's prefab buildings as well. The setup here with Europe is going to include a drone hub, a moisture evaporator, and a fuel refinery. If you're playing as the International Mars mission, you don't start with the fuel refinery because you don't need one. There's something quite valuable, to be honest, about starting with a Sterling generator. It is so, so much power. So much more power than solar panels and things. But I think what I'm just going to do is bring a scooch more... Oh, I guess I can only add one thing. Um, we really can delay the electronics and machine parts. I think the machine parts are a little bit more important early on. I'm going to bring a scooch more of those, and I think that'll be okay. I think we can live without the orbital probe. So, the next thing we have to do is choosing our starting area. Now, there are going to be some predefined spots here, which are considered to be pretty good. This one's particularly easy, for example. Lots of resources, very few threats. I think most of the starting areas are going to be like that. High on resources, low on threats. If I can actually select that spot, as opposed to the spots next to it. Yeah, and a lot of them have a really interesting landscape as well. But uh, let's hit random a few times and see what we get. I think this is too resource poor. Be nice to get something with a lot of meteors. We don't need a ton of concrete. What do we have here? Now, okay. Well, we're not going to lie. This is going to be a really, really difficult start. The fact that it's got a lot of concrete honestly doesn't matter that much. Uh, being low on water and metals is going to hurt a fair bit. It's also, while we don't really have to worry about cold waves, which I guess is good, meteors, dust storms, and dust devils. Okay. Prepare yourselves for a failed colony, okay? This is, this game is not easy. Like, rather, it's easy to play, and the next thing is easy, and the next thing is easy, and then everyone's dead. But hey, what could possibly go wrong? So, we're going to load up over here and take a look at what our terrain looks like. Now, I think the actual topology, uh, the game has a bunch of built-in terrains, a large variety of them. Um, so, I mean, it'll be, you know, somewhat randomized based on your collision. By the way, if you use the same coordinates as I do, you'll get the same topology. However, the placement of the resources on the planet, I believe, will be completely randomized over here. So, here we are. Mission sponsor is ERP, and we are a futurist. So, the first thing the game would like us to do is land our rocket, but let's take a look around here. What we've got, oh, we've got an elevated area over here, which won't be reachable by ground. We'll have to build tunnels to get from one point to the other. Elevated areas are great, because it's actually, um, I believe, dust storms tend to hit the low ground as opposed to the high ground. In addition to that, high ground has more power generated from um, wind power plants. So, what I'm actually wondering, I know we've only got the one orbital probe, I'm wondering about taking a blind shot up here to get a resource, maybe. I'm going to go right in the middle over here. If we can get concrete, we could settle up here. Although, hang on, are we seeing any water anywhere up here? Water might be mostly be a low ground. Polymers, that's interesting. Now, this is a low water start. We actually might not have any. We might be limited entirely to vaporators. It's possible that water doesn't show up in the tooltip either, but I think it does. I'm just thinking there's, you know, not enough of a water present for it to really show up one way or another. Oh, 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 water right over there. So, again, the high ground, we don't seem to have any. I think I'm just going to go and zap here. Achieved. There is water. There's a milestone to uh, locate water on Mars. Very far away from our initial base. Not very helpful. So, what I think we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and land in this initial area. Because um, there's not concrete over there, we really need concrete. There's a nice scattering of surface metals here as well, which are going to be good for initial build. And there, that's good too, because we didn't actually bring any metal with us because we can expect a few resources on the surface. So I think I'm just going to drop the rocket. I think what I might do is drop it right in the middle of this. Let's take a quick look around here. I mean, we don't know of any other resources there, so in terms of min-maxing where the rocket should be, I don't know. This large radius around the rocket, that's the range of the drones controlled by the rocket. So I guess I'll go here. It'll be in the center of all the resources, and we'll just have to get going there. I could have rotated the, the rocket as well before uh, landing it, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter much for the rocket. At some point, we will refuel the rocket and launch it back to Earth, where it will be able to bring back more supplies. Now, we do have access to one more rocket waiting for us on Earth, because Europe does start with two, and that's going to be very, very handy, because it's going to be a little while before we can go and refuel this. In fact, I don't... Did we start? Did we bring a prefab for, um, for fuel processing? I'm not sure that we did. Oh, we do have a fuel refinery prefab. Okay, so we can actually create some fuel early on. All right, so there we go. 
We are unloading from the rocket. We've got our, our RC Explorer over here, which we can drive around. And we got our drones, which will do some work for us. Okay, let's get started right away. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and uh, assign some sectors to be scanned. Um, sort of lean on this side over here. We're going to try to work our way up to the water. And uh, we have to set some tech because we're getting some free research all the time. In Europe, we will research quite quickly as a base, which is nice. Uh, unlocking farmer early on is very nice. We don't need the factories right now. Just faster drones is awfully handy early on. We've already got the autonomous sensor tech. We don't need the subsurface heating. We won't have the power to run these yet. We don't have people, so these boosts are also not particularly important. I think we're going to go ahead. We'll just get our drones to go a little bit faster here. And probably we'll do early research on the farms as well. Because um, I really like set up my initial domes with farms as opposed to hydroponics. Although if we get the um, the Logi fungi, that would be particularly nice. Okay, let's, uh, let's get it started. What we need is we need some power. Now, to start off with... Um, since we didn't bring a sterling generator, our options are only solar panels and wind turbines. Wind turbines need concrete to build, and we haven't started concrete mining yet. So we've got no choice but to start with a large solar panel. I'm going to stick it, like, right in the middle here. It's going to be fine. Here, I'm going to do something kind of like that. And, yeah, for mining, this concrete is low grade, average grade. Average grade will give us more concrete per second or minute or day or whatever um, as the, uh, the extractor works. So we'll go ahead and drop it somewhere there. And, yeah, we'll set up a power line that goes up to around here. So the solar panel obviously only works during the day. Um, the solar panel does generates five units of power by default, and the concrete extractor will require five units of power. You can see on the tooltip over here. So during the day, we'll power this. During the night, nothing will work. Um, I could build a second solar uh, panel um, and a battery, and or I could go with a wind turbine, but we can wait just to scooch before that happens. Let's take a look at our other priorities. We will have to set up refueling at some point. We do have the second rocket, so we don't literally have to do it instantly. What we are going to be looking to do fairly early on is collecting water and oxygen so that we can get our first dome set up. I think, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into infrastructure, and we're going to get a sensor tower up and running real fast. I'm going to drop it right over here. So what the sensor tower does is it gives you a speed to scanning all sectors. Only 10% boost, but the sectors that are nearby get a massive, like, 300% boost. So we'll scan quite a bit faster by having this. And I'm going to go to fast speed over here, fastest speed, because we're hoping to find some work for our RC Explorer. Find some anomalies that'll give us money, uh, or sorry, not money, but rather research or unlock more techs. Solar panel saying I've got nothing plugged into the grid right now, and that is true. It's going to have to wait until there. And actually, this sensor tower doesn't have to be here. It doesn't need power. So what I think I'm going to do... Oh my god, that's a meteor impact. We are in a bad area. <laughs> um, what I'm going to do is at the farthest edges of the reach of our drones, I'm going to put a sensor tower. There you go. So right here is fine. It's, it's technically, it's in an unexplored sector. There's a chance I'm putting it on a resource, but not really. So we're going to do that. And I can dismiss this, I suppose. Yes, I know we have a building that's not working because there's no power at night, but that's okay. Um, and I will put another sensor tower job, yeah, I think on the far right side as well. It uses a few materials, but we will really benefit from the increased scanning speed. So this is really at the range, I guess I could have gone a little lower, you know, that's fine. But sort of at the maximum range here of our rocket. Now if we go back to the map and we mouse over, you can see 400% scanning boost on this tile here, for example. Because there's actually a tower inside of it here. So it does fall off with distance, but it's still going to help a lot. And that's going to be really valuable for us because we're going to be relying on this explorer doing some neat things for us. There you go, another sensor tower there. So normally they would take power and require some maintenance, but not for us, not for the futurist. There's also an upgrade you can get. Basically, that's all it is. We, we started with the upgrade that everyone will ultimately have access to for autonomous sensors. All right, this is running during the day now, which is good, so we'll start to extract a little bit of concrete. Uh, what we need to do is we've got some resources that are sitting in our rocket here. You can see polymers, electronics, and machine parts. We're going to go and get those unloaded. I'm going to just put you there. I'm also going to get a specific concrete storage, and I'm also going to get a dumping scanning. site because no, this, no. Um, this thing is going to create uh, just waste rock, and we're going to want to dump it somewhere to keep things organized, so we're going to do that. We found our first anomaly. That is a I get free science anomaly. So I'm going to take our RC Explorer, send it over there. That's going to be lovely. I, I think if you overshoot on your science, the extra science is wasted. So do make sure you have enough stuff queued up so that that's not a problem. If you do switch your um, your science, actually, we don't need the farm right away. If you could get the stronger 
drone hubs. That actually would be very handy because we started with a drone hub prefab, so I won't put it down until we've got the upgrade to drone hubs because I don't think it does it retroactively. So you guys are unloading. If we had twisted the rocket the other way around, they'd have to move a little bit less, but it's really not a big deal either way because, I mean, most of it you still have to go up and down the ramp, so no matter which way it's pointing, you end up traveling a similar distance. So we're unloading the goods over here into the Universal Depot. The concrete will get put over there, and as we start to accumulate some of this, we will... Um, set up a few more things. We actually have enough concrete here that I could, and I will, in fact, build a wind turbine. You can see here we're so low that we have a 0% elevation boost to our power generation. That's, I mean, they're still going to generate 5 power, which is the same as the solar panels, but they do need a little bit of extra material. One of the big differences as well is the solar panels, when they, everything in the game needs maintenance. Some things need maintenance more rapidly, especially if they're exposed to, to a lot of Martian dust from things. Um, then they'll need, they'll break down, they'll stop working until they're maintained. A solar panel needs one metal to maintain it, which is going to be fairly common. The wind turbine requires machine parts, which we'll have to fabricate or ship from Earth. So we researched that anomaly. We found another anomaly. So I'm going to go and send it over here. This one here is something interesting. We don't know what it is. And yes, I'm getting more milestones, which are going to be listed over here. Two anomalies, sectors being scanned. And yeah, we'll, we'll continue to work sort of upwards over here so that we can... The underground water deposit is excellent. Actually, what kind of quality is it? What are we talking about here? Low quality and not a large number either. That's actually very disappointing. A water extractor on that will actually produce, I believe, only four. Because by default, a... Um, where is it? Life support. A water extractor produces a base production of five. On low quality, it produces four. On very low, it's three. If you happen to get like a high quality one, it can produce six. There might even be very high. The explorer had found very treasure the way our scientists were reacting. Ooh. It was a sulfur-rich regolith. That's very interesting. So we have a choice. We get a thousand science instantly, or we can get a 10% discount to engineering boost for the rest of the game. Now, this 10% discount will equal out quite a bit more than a thousand science over the course of things. At first, the science, the, the researches, the techs are worth a uh, thousand research, but very soon it's 1,500, then 3,000. Then 5,000, 7,000, 10,000, 20,000. I mean, 20,000 is like the most extreme uh, expensive one. But this will, in the course of the game, save us a lot more research. That being said, I kind of think we might go for the early research boost. Damn. Remember, as we finish text, we get money as well. No, I'm going to do this. We'll keep the lifetime gain to engineering research here. So you can see this is 900 instead of 1,000. So, I mean, right away we'd save some stuff. Yeah, it'll probably pay for itself fairly well. Okay, so that RC rover has no more anomalies to check out. I'm going to tell it to come back here and charge itself up on the power cable. I think anomalies can spawn from meteorite impacts, as well as, you know, there's just a chance to find them in general. So maybe with more meteorites we'll find more anomalies. I don't know. So that tech is researched, so now our drones are faster, which is going to be nice for our overall efficiency. We're accruing some concrete over here. I really like to keep this open a lot so we can see. So we've got 22 concrete piling up, and we've, you know, just casual metals we've picked up. Another anomaly over here, so the RC rover is fully charged up, so we'll go. That's another eyeball, which is... Wait, we have water here? And it's average grade? Oh, baby. Okay. That is going to make our life a lot easier. How about this metal? This is very low grade. That's unfortunate. Now, metal deposits and rich metal deposits can only be mined by actual people. Yeah, there's some tech later on that lets you get around that. But mostly by actual people here. And being able to mine our own metal is very good. But very low means we're going to like extract it very slowly. We're really hoping that we get lucky enough and find some more metals here. There's a high chance of metals here, here, maybe on the edges. This probably means there's like a metal deposit like on the border of one of these. You know, that's why it'll sort of show up on both. But we'll pop it in a not-too-distant future, which is going to be nice. Overall, I think we've got a fairly good location and something I'm relatively Sectors. pleased with. Our explorer just got into a pretty serious accident. The good news is, it's still in one piece. Hmm. Vehicle stumbled on a crust fault which could have lasted for a couple hundred years under the slow erosion of the planet. Disturbed by the mechanical motion of the scanning probes, the surface opened like a wound and swallowed the rover. Luckily, only for a dozen meters. The sturdy machine got out of the hole but nonetheless sustained heavy damage. Millions of years ago, Mars had been shaken to its core by a cataclysmic impact which sealed the fate of the planet. Since then, Mars, like all giants, is dying, too slow for our mortal eyes to witness. Yet even today, the death throes of the red planet can be felt unmistakably. I believe this is our mystery. I think this is specific to our mystery. I'm not sure, though. 
but maybe. Anyway, the RC rover has malfunctioned, or Explorer has malfunctioned, must be replaced, repaired by drones. Unfortunately, it is out of range of my drones, which are currently limited to here. I do have a drone hub, and we'll probably get an RC drone on uh, our next rocket or something, because it is really handy Research to have around, complete. although we could conceivably live without it. Drone swarm research is done. We're working on our biotech now. What else do we get? Faster RC transport. That will be nice since we don't actually have the uh, the shuttle hub start unlocked from the beginning. Oh! Explore AI. A hundred science per soul for each RC Explorer vehicle. I'm not sure that our downed Explorer will provide us with the extra science per day. I'm not sure, but it might. And in any case, this is a really good one to invest in early. Uh, the transport optimization isn't a huge deal, although it is nice. Water reclamation, so our spire needs less water. It does take a lot of people to do it. I think this is probably a good thing for a very large spire, but I don't know if we rush that. More rocket cargo space. I don't think we have the money to really get to take advantage of this, to be honest. I don't think we have to worry about cold snaps here. I think what we'll do is we'll research... Because at some point we'll want the poly polymer factory, and maybe, you know, researching this early, we might be able to get away without prefabbing a polymer factory. And that would be very nice. We already have one fuel refinery, but we will need a lot more. And so again, it will be nice not to have to worry about prefabbing very many of them. All right, I'm fairly keen on that. So we are we are very limited on our range because well, no, that's not true. We do have a uh, we have a drone hub. So we're probably going to put a drone. Uh, we're probably going to have to put a hub here unless our scanning reveals more metal over here. Oh, there's another meteor impact or meteorite, I suppose. I don't think I want to commit to anything quite yet, not until a little bit more scanning is done. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put a cut right here in the video, and I'm going to let the game play for a couple more minutes here to reveal what's in these other sectors, and next episode we'll get a better sense about what our starting situation will be and where we're going to want to put our first dome, which of course is where our people are going to live. Thanks for watching, folks, and I'll oh, see you next time. Oh, all these anomalies I can't use because my... Rover, my explorer is broken. Oh, we'll fix it soon. See you then.